Hey guys, Eliza Hudson from ConversionWise, and today I'm going to run through some uh, optimizations for your product pages in order to help you skyrocket your conversion rates. Okay, so before I jump into the topic of the day, just a couple of announcements. If you are joining us from YouTube for the first time, then welcome to our channel. And if you are not a member of our Facebook group, then you'll find a link underneath this video. You can just go on and click to join, um, or you can head on over to Facebook and search conversion rate community. Now, this is a totally free group. In here, you are going to find loads of useful tips and tricks. You can get your page audited, and of course, this this is where we make all of our announcements as well. So if you want to be the first to know the next exciting bit of news, this is well worth joining. And of course, guys, if you're joining us from the community and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, then make sure you head on over, click subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to know as soon as we drop some fresh content. So basically, guys, what's prompted me to uh, run over this today is that I conduct a lot of audits here at ConversionWise, and I am still absolutely staggered by the amount of product pages that I see which are not optimized. Now, if you are driving any, any paid traffic to your product pages and you have not implemented some, if not all of this stuff, then you are literally chucking money away. And you know what? Even if you are not driving traffic, if you are not optimizing your product pages, you're just missing out on sales. So it's super important. And I just wanted to bring this up, you know, bring it back to the forefront uh, and remind you guys and show you guys some things that you can implement to really, really help. So I'm quite excited. Now, the page I've got in front of me, funnily enough, I just wanted to draw your attention to because it's something, it's almost a little bit typical of some things that I see. Um, in actual fact, this is one of Shopify's top picks for a product page, which is really quite surprising um, in terms of conversion. Um, I can tell you here and now, in terms of conversion, there's so much that can be done here. So basically, guys, when you land on a page, you should be first and foremost capturing your consumer's attention. Um, if you don't know about the ADA principle, you can check out our other uh, videos, but essentially it's attention above the fold, interest as we go through, desire and action. A very logical flow for the consumer and great for conversion. But what we should be able to tell as soon as we land is essentially, what is this product? Um, how do I get it? Can I trust you? And of course, are others actually valuing your product as well? So there's these sort of five key elements that go into making it up. But if we just look at this one as an example, you know, ultimately, whilst this is no doubt a very stunning image, you know, if I'm to land here, that the pricing is almost invisible. Uh, there's no clear call to action. There's no social proof. There's no value proposition. There's nothing here which makes this instantly uh, recognizable to me or indeed makes me want to purchase this product. So I'll just go through a little bit further. I won't go all the way through it. But ultimately, as we come down, this is where we hit what you'd more typically expect to see. But even within this, there are still key elements missing. So yes, we've got great imagery. We've got an absolute description here. Um, again, you know, we've got no social proof, no trust. The call to action is almost invisible. There's, the, the, there's loads that could be done here. Um, which would absolutely guarantee to increase that conversion rate. So this is why I just wanted to run through uh, an example and some key elements that I think you need to be implementing. So what I want to do to share with you today is uh, a site called Zygo, Shop Zygo. These are a great bunch of guys that we work with. Um, and the reason I've chosen this one is A, I absolutely love the store, um, but also, you know, it's nailing the principles and it, it just works. It absolutely works. So what I want to share with you is First of all, let's look at the hero section. Now, when we land, we're looking for those five key elements. So we've got product imagery. We have the uh, social proof in two places in this instance. Um, we have headline call to action, very, very clear. And then we have trust icons. Now we've got some additional ones, but I'll go into that in just a moment. So guys, what you need to make sure is that you have those five elements above 
above the fold on your product pages. Now, very often I'll just see some social proof and the call to action. The rest of it is neglected. Now, social proof, you can take that up a notch, include an actual review of your product above the fold. If I land here right now, I actually do have pretty much all of the information I need in order to go ahead and make this purchase. That doesn't mean you need to neglect the rest of the page, but these are the five elements you need to be including. So well worth making sure that you have this review above the fold as well. Now you'll also see that we have payment icons. Again, these are missing on so many product pages, but you'd be amazed at the impact that they have. So do make sure that you are including those by your call to action. For your call to action, you'll see this is a very blue brand, but we have a contrasting colored call to action. Now, the whole point of that is that it pops from the page. So there's no there's no ambiguity. I know exactly what is expected of me. I am expected to click this button. So do make sure you are using contrasting colors for your calls to action. Now, some additional things that you guys can go ahead and implement, and it, regardless of your theme, regardless of what you're using, you should be adding in scarcity. Now, lots of different ways of scarcity. As you can see here, it's actually quite subtle, but it's very effective. So we have the pulsating green button, selling fast, buy now, you know, tell the consumer that if they don't hurry up, they're going to miss out on this, uh, this opportunity. And again, in the, uh, in the banner, we call out, you know, order today to avoid disappointment, emotive language telling me that I really do need to take action. Now, another way you can do this is to, uh, for example, you could have uh, limited stock. Uh, you could specify a number. So you could say like, I've got 10 left, but over here you've got like, I've got 20 people viewing this item right now. So there's different degrees of uh, scarcity, but you'll see that this is not, uh, this is not an in your face countdown timer. Um, it, it's subtle, yet it is effective. So I highly recommend that you go away and implement some scarcity to your product pages. Now, trust icons. Now, you might have a, a product which has been featured somewhere. Um, and to be speaking, what we'd recommend is that you get that across the bottom of your hero section. Now, for these guys, it's be these recognizable icons. You know, everybody knows Amazon, everybody knows YouTube. Any icons you can use that display trust instantly uh, going to instill more confidence in your page from the consumer. So do make sure that you are incorporating any trust icons you can. And again, you'd get those within uh, within your first uh, section, sort of like hero section into the next. Now, as we go through this page, we're then going to start to pique their interest. And guys, you want to do that with your content. If you have a video, obviously we have that here. And this is something else which I think you should implement onto your pages. Now, this is how to use the product. If you don't have a product that can be how to use, then you want to just have a very, very standard um, uh, process step. And it, it's literally, and I will share a wireframe with you shortly, but it's literally one, order your product. Two, you'll get it in and just specify that time frame. Three, list out the key benefits. So I don't know if it's skincare, you know, you're going to feel radiant within three uses or whatever it might be, or whether it's slimming tablets, whatever the benefit of your product is, you call out that benefit in the final one. Um, but these process steps are great. They just show people how easy either it is to order or to use, and it's a good way of piquing their interest. And then, you know, from there, they're gonna carry on through your process. Something else that we see missing on so many product pages is this, a repeat call to action as we go through the page. Now, repeat calls to action, guys, they need to be backed up with supporting buffers. And what do I mean by that? I mean these. So you've got your star rating, you've got your payment icons. It's a very subtle, cue to a consumer. If somebody's sat there and they're kind of on the fence, they're not sure, you know, it, it, without them consciously realizing it, it's just, okay, other people are, or I've got the payment icons. It's just a way of supporting that call to action um, and helping the consumer to take that decision. As you can see, we've got more trust icons as we go through. We're still piquing their interest. These guys got some lovely content. Then we go into, um, a review section. So we're going into that, that desire section. Again, if you've got, um, 
you know, on your store. Um, if you've got a product review uh, app, which I would absolutely expect a lot of you to have, or most of you to have, you still want to include a section which has got these uh, these hard-coded reviews. Um, and that way you've always got it there on the page. Um, and again, it's social proof. It's such a key principle. So make sure you're getting your social proof on. And there are five elements to a converting review. That is your actual, uh, your image, it's going to be your uh, the person's name. You've got the star rating, the review itself. You can have a, a little headline as well if you want to. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure you're incorporating all those key elements. And again, bang, we hit them with a repeat call to action. Obviously, more content as we're going through. We're still piquing people's interest. It's really good to give your consumers content on your products. Very often it's just product and then straight into related, right? You think about the different aware levels of awareness of your consumer. You want to be, you know, selling this product um, to people that are cold, that need a little bit more education. So it is important to provide context to your products. Now, as we go down, we have more reviews, um, which is awesome. So always make sure and they can still see. And we're just backing this one up with that star rating because we're not asking them to buy. So we're just going to back that up with a star rating. Then as we go down, don't forget guys, following the ADA principle, make sure you've got FAQs on your product pages. Again, this is something I see missing very often. Um, do make sure that you have an FAQ section on the page, not on a secondary page, not buried within your footer. You want to make sure that it is out and open on the page. And then the last thing is to include a final call to action to purchase your product. This is possibly the one thing that I see the most on product pages. And that is that we just end the page and that the, there's no, you know, there's, there's just no real, well, there is no ending. It just suddenly ends. And this has got a sticky CTA, which is great. Um, but what you want to do is make sure that I then didn't have to scroll all the way back up to the top in order to take action. You just got to assume that consumers are a really, really lazy and you just want to make it so incredibly easy that it's a no brainer situation. So guys, I've talked you just through the anatomy of this one. I know I've just pulled out on a few points, but the, the key things that I want you to take away are those, those things that you can go ahead and implement. I've got a wireframe that I can share with you here as well. Now, guys, you can actually get access to these uh, and more in our course. But again, it just pulls out on those key elements. So we've got the imagery, we have social proof. Um, again, depending on your theme, where you've got these things, these are the key elements you need. Imagery, social proof, um, your call to action, trust, more trust, and of course, to have a strong sort of headline or product name as well. So I won't run through all of this, um, but I just wanted to share those few key points with you today. Um, and anyway, guys, go away, implement some of this stuff, and I'll see you on the next video.